This know also. But in the last days, perilous times shall come. a mock. This it's, is a mock of God and a mock of the scriptures. So this is um, Genesis 21, verse 14. Now think about this. Back in those days, when water and wine was kept, it was kept in skins. A skin of water, wine skins, that's what it was back then. Now, it says, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water, and he gave it a bottle of water. Bottles didn't exist. The word bottles was never in the Bible, and it's in there now. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that. And there's, that's, and there's see? bottle references all over the place in, in the Bible, yeah. and yet it always was. But now let, let me get have, let me get this straight real quick. Hold on. Uh, so, Bill, now this is a Bible that you have had for a long time. And literally, you've gone back to that Bible, and the verse has been changed in the Bible that you own. That's how it's been for me. That's correct. I own four of them, four King James Bibles. One is nearly 20 years old. It travels with me all over the country when I'm performing these deliverances. That has been changed. I have another one that's 157 years old in the top of my closet. Close. That, too, has been changed. I have one that's close. I've got one that's uh, 110-ish years old. It's an old family Bible of ours. I have two others that were owned by my father. They're at least 50 years old, and I have one myself that's about 40 years old. So, And all of them have, have changed from what they were. And I, I mean, I've got in, in, the, uh, in the ones that I've had and the ones that my father had, for instance, um, there are extensive you know, notes and everything that we've written into them. Uh, you know, I... I, I mm -hmm. I remember very distinctly, you know, highlighting different verses, and I go back and look at the highlight now. No, that verse is completely different now than what it was. I have one for you here. I don't know if you've got this one or not there, Bill, but uh, Matthew 27, 9. Um, then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, Yeah. The 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, mm -hmm. whom they of the children of Israel did value. Since when do we have Jeremy the prophet? Are we going to come yeah. out? With, uh, with Bob the Prophet? Oh, oh, come on. You we have no, Jeremy, we have you know. Jeremy. Uh, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. We have words that are, were never there. Words like Matrix, Bank, Bottles, Butler, Unicorn, Naughty, Gay, Gorgeous Stuff, Couch, Pisseth, Space, Flesh Hooks, Jupiter, Suburbs, Highways, Tires, Mufflers, and more and more and more. It's just <laughs> unbelievable. It's These words were not there, and they are there now. See, now that just knocks me upside the head, and I can't, I mean, and and I mean, I, I just, I don't know how to explain something like this. It's, it, yeah, because. Michael, I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. I was sent this information uh, by a friend of mine in Scotland, and this was, I don't know, six months ago or whatever. I didn't want to believe this. When, uh, when this lady sent me this information, I thought, I don't have time for this. I'm a busy man. I don't have time to get into this ridiculous stuff. So <laughs> I started to delete it. 
That's and how Josh I felt. me and said, watch this. And then I went and watched the video, and it showed these scriptures that were altered. And I said, I'll disprove this right now. I grabbed my Bibles, and I set them on my desk and opened them up to where the, you know, the scriptures in question were. And I literally almost fell off of my chair when I saw in my Bibles, in my home, in my possession, have been supernaturally changed. Now, this is beyond my understanding. I'm a man who wants to know everything and understand how things work, and this is beyond my understanding. It's literally an altering of reality. The reality yeah. that we existed in previously is not existent now. We have entered into, some way or another, a different reality altogether. And then when you read some of these preposterous uh, scriptures that, I mean, you just look and you say, uh, okay, guys, now here's one. <laughs> if you think this sounds normal to you, then I give up. Um, here are two examples of what I believe is a total mock of God, and one is Numbers 11, verse 12. It says, Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them? That thou should say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father. Bearest the sucking child, a nursing father. I used to say nursing woman. Yep, I was going to bring that one up for you, Bill. Exactly. There, there, yeah. there is no concept in the Bible of of uh, nursing fathers in any way, and yet now there it is. It is bizarre. Okay, bizarre. so with and this, Job, is genderism. Job twenty one oh verse twenty four now says his breasts are full of milk and his yes. bones oh. are moist in the marrow. His breasts no. are full of milk. Yes. Oh, listen. Uh, and, uh, and one thing, one thing to make clear too is that that during the time period that the English language translations were done, uh, men men's boobs were not referred to as breasts; they were referred to as paps. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because <laughs> now in Revelation one thirteen, it used to describe Jesus as a commanding officer that had a gold sash going across his chest, and now it says he is clothed with a garment down to the foot and a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. That means bra across the breast. Yes. Girt about the paps means bra across the breast with a golden girdle. That's yep. how Jesus is described now. Uh, how about Matthew twenty six forty five? Now, again, you don't have to know the Bible to know this passage. If you've seen Jesus of Nazareth or any of the uh, depictions of Jesus, you know that in, uh, in the hour where he knows that the time is at hand, he's greatly distressed. You know, he's telling Peter, I need you to stay awake, make sure they're awake. You must be awake. The time is at hand. He's so distressed, he goes into the garden, he gets on his knees, he's praying to God, Father, if it were all possible, take this cup from me. He's sweating blood. That's how distressed he is. Well, here's how the scripture reads now, and this is Matthew 26, 45. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. Sleep on now? Yep. Yep. Like, like, oh, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and take a nap. It's fine, guys. It's yes, fine. Cinderella. Said, Why are you sleeping? <laughs> Again, this is preposterous. This is uh, an absolute mock. And then how about Luke 19, 27, where all of a sudden Jesus, who is about love and peace and says, you know, hey, if somebody hits you on the cheek, offer them the other one and love your enemies and all these things. Well, guess what he says now in Luke 19, 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Slay them before me. Exactly. What the heck? Seriously, that goes against every yeah. bit of message that has always been Christ's centerpiece. Here's an interesting thing that, that I've noticed, and that is that the King James Bible seems to have been changed more than any other. Yeah, because well, I, they started there. They have started there, and they're going to go to all of them, but that's where it's starting. I think the reason is because more people are reliant upon the King James Version. Yes, I, I, I would agree. I, I would agree. So and, if, you know, they, if they can mock the now, King now, first, yeah. then they've hit the core. You see. Some of the new word translations uh, are starting to be affected by this. Yeah, so I know there's a, a few that are down. in the NIV but, that I yeah, don't Yeah, but right across, across everyone, everyone in every place that I've seen, we'll go back right to Isaiah 11, um, yeah, 11, 6. They all yeah. say wolf. 
every single one that I've come across is wolf. You're exactly right. And, I mean, there's no way to reconcile that now. I mean, no. uh, yeah, Michael, I mean, again, you don't have to be a Bible scholar or even know the Bible to oh, understand no. that scripture and do research on it and know that it was always the lion laying down with the lamb. Oh, yeah. And that See, now, that's that's one of those better. that's one of those that I do remember. And that's why I say that's what when it, when it comes to evidence, this, this Bible uh, end of it is probably the biggest eye opener for me and go figure i'm not a biblical scholar but boy it certainly strikes me and and i i don't see how you could deny it and so now can't deny it you gotta wonder uh what what really is happening here with, with the lion and the lamb changes here's here's the problem the lion was always a representation of of judah of israel okay Correct. and that part of the prophecy is very important there in Isaiah to change it from the lion into the wolf the wolf has always been a representation of 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 evil of chaos of a chaos yeah, the devil the, the devil. wolf in sheep's exactly. clothing and and that was everywhere throughout the bible you're going to find no reference of the wolf being a gentle you know kind yeah, absolutely. of being right <laughs> It's so, always a negative in implication, no matter where it is mentioned with throughout the, all yeah. the whole yeah. for, from Genesis to, to Revelation. And the same with ravens as well. They they're in the same. Yeah, category. absolutely, and they're in there now. Yeah. Yeah, and and with with the lamb, the lamb has always been a representation of Christ as the ultimate yeah. sacrifice. So the lion and the lamb, that 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 passage there in Isaiah is a representation of the prophecy to come. The the covenant of of Israel and the Sabbath. Yeah, that's very good, Ira. Yes, you're right. So to change that into something else, I mean, it devastates that prophecy. You see what I mean? It, mm -hmm. it destroys its core. Yeah, but you see, but there's one other thing, though, Ira. It, to, to us who are astute and can recognize this, it sets off alarm bells like n yep. no, no other because it's a clear signal that guess what? We need to be in the last days if all of a sudden the wolf has entered the flock. What, yeah. what, you Correct. know, it says beware of she of the wolf, in, like, as you, you brought out, Bill, that beware of the wolf in, in sheep's clothing. Well, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. Now, now the wolf is right with the flock. Now that you've brought that one up, here, this will sum it all up right here. Amos 8, verse 11 and 12. Behold. The days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Yes. Not a famine of bread, not, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And yes. they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to even to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. And that is exactly what we see happening right now. These changes in the Bible are are in relation i think to exactly that verse i've used that verse yeah. in fact as my counterpoint to these people that are blasting me talking about the changes in the bible it, look it says right there there's going to be a time where things are changing there are going to be problems with what you're seeing on the page you are going to be starving for the knowledge that you're craving this is why you Correct. were told to, to have it written in your heart this is why you were told to have it there so that nobody could ever take it away from you you should have listened. That is correct. There is one very dramatic change, prophetic-wise, that has happened. Um, and uh, I, I want to read it to you here. This is actually the first prophecy in the Bible. Genesis 3.15. In the King James Version, it now says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. I shall, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Whoa. It used to say, he crush, crush thy yeah. head. Now it says, it yeah. shall bruise his head, or thy head. Yep. Yeah. You see, very... And you know, was, I've, so, I've quoted Genesis 3.15 quite a bit over the years, Ira, and I, that must be fresh. That must be uh, freshly changed, because I wasn't aware of that. And then John ten fourteen. Now you guys are very familiar with this one, right? This is one of the well known scriptures in the Bible. Uh, it used to say, "I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me." Doesn't say that anymore. It says, "I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine." Yep. 
the sentence structure well, makes no sense. As, as it makes no as, sense at all. And here's another preposterous scripture. I don't know if you guys are aware of this one. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Um, it used to say, Now the God of peace that brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus. That's what it used to say. Now it says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. So it's saying that uh, he has been brought up and he's been uh, resurrected twice now. This is Hebrews 13, 20. And a scripture like that could really cause great damage uh, in the psyche of some people who do read the scriptures and who do have faith, because they would question to themselves, wait a minute, so did Jesus already come and now we're left behind? Is that what is going on here now? Jesus is already... You know, he's already came and gone, and we're left behind. And, and again, uh, just that one word twists the whole thing around. So it used to say, now the God of peace that brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus. Now it says, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead. And that is Hebrews 13, verse 20. Here's another ridiculous one. This is Jeremiah 24, verse 2. Uh, one basket had very good figs, and even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs. Naughty figs? That <laughs> word used to be bad. Now it's they, called they, naughty. It says the word is naughty. They used to start fights you're with the other naughty. figs. You're a naughty fig. Yes, you are. You're naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? And here's another preposterous scripture, Ezekiel 24, verse 23. And your tires shall be upon your heads. Your tires, that should say turbans. It used to say turbans, and now it says your tires yeah. shall be upon your heads. Yeah, interesting. I, I still like the one with the, you shouldn't use old wine bottles for new wine. That, that That's just. Yeah, incredible. Mark, uh, Mark 2.22. Yeah, and no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and that was always wineskins. Yeah, they, they didn't have bottles back then. Correct. And, that word didn't exist back then. Yeah, and... And, and the and bottles was, didn't exist back then. Exactly, and they, they always used wine bottles over and over again. So it's yeah. like, okay, whatever. You know, it's all so, about context, right? It's all yeah. about, so if you don't know the history, you're not going to catch a lot of the problems that are happening with these changes. Um, Dr. Richard Day, he was a very renowned atheist, uh, very uh, involved in the CIA and uh, the power elite. Um, he came out in the 1960s and was discussing uh, changes that were going to be seen uh, in different um, uh, you know, people's Bibles, uh, other books mm -hmm. that you know that uh, that people would read, and he said, basically, he's uh, paraphrasing a lot here, but he said uh, essentially, what they're going to do is they're going to change small words in the Bible. They're not going to be drastic changes. They're not going to be something that you know, oh my God, what's going on here, kind of thing. You know that yeah. everyone's going to notice, but they're going to be very small changes in very small words or phrasings, because the connotations that are attached to these alternative words that are being used can bring a whole new meaning to the scripture that you're reading. So the small words, the small subtle changes that, that we're seeing could be related to something like what was being discussed there. And he said uh, that he, he had no problem telling people about it because Nothing could be done to stop it at that point, and that was during the 1960s. So, <laughs> right, 1969, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just throwing that out there, if if people are wondering why these changes, biblically speaking, so on and so forth, are things that we're seeing, you know, it's because these small changes allow for wiggle room in interpretive uh, idealism that's being used by a lot of preachers that are out there to get across an alternative message. Uh, it's all part, I think, of the, um, you know, a lot of people want to want to maybe look into the United Nations and the idea of this Maitreya figure that they are trying to bring in, this ecumenical sort of religious entity that is the new yeah. Christ. 
against. And uh, that's a big problem. You know, there's a big problem with that whole Maitreya concept. Uh, but it could no be question. the changes that we're seeing are in relation to bringing this thing about, you know, this this uh, idea of the ecumenical or the, the uh, uh, bringing together of all of the different religions under one umbrella. Yeah, um, but two scriptures that, that fall right in line with what you're saying is Luke 17.34, where Jesus says, I tell you, in that night there shall be, it used to say, uh, there shall be a man and a woman in one bed. Uh, now it says, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two men in one bed. And then the next uh, verse, Luke 17, um, 35, says, and it used to say there will be two women grinding grain together at the mill. Now it says two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Got to love the connotations to go with all that. There you go, and that falls right in line with what you're saying, and how, by these little subtle changes like that, it can mean a whole other thing. If anything, I pray that people will take this information and develop a, a very close personal relationship with God, and then His will be done. And you could have blessed assurance that if God is with us and for us, then nothing can stand against us. Then the lion shall lay down with the lamb, and the bear shall eat grass, like the ox, and a child shall play on the hole of the asp, and nothing shall hurt, nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Then, then the, the lion, lion shall, shall lay down, down with the lamb, and the bear shall eat grass, grass like the ox, like and, and the child shall play on the hole of the asp, and, and nothing, nothing shall hurt, nor destroy in all my holy mountain. mountain. Then, then the lion shall lay down with the lamb, and the bear shall eat grass like the ox. And the lion shall lay down the lion
wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Then the lion shall lay down with the lamb, and the bear shall eat grass like the ox. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. shall lie down with the kid.
leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, and a little child shall lead them. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Desmond and I am from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, me too. Is it Desmond? Is that what you said? Yes. Desmond from the BK. And are your parents over there? Raise your hand, parents. Give them a big round of applause. Now, Desmond, you are the future of America. And the little child shall lead them. Now, Desmond, you are the future of America. And the little child shall lead them. The biggest movie this year will be about me. The biggest movie this year will be about me. shall lie down with the kid, and the little child shall lead me. which I saw was like unto a leopard. And this is the alarm bell. History is being rewritten. The Bible is being rewritten. So we have a different mindset, a different tolerance or intolerance, let's say, to move the consensus of mankind, of society, to go in a new direction. Isn't that what we're saying this is happening because the reason? Now I want you to think about what you just said there. So, in the beginning, that God made and created the heavens and the earth in His image, after His likeness, after His kind, and He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and our kind. 
devil is trying to recreate the world in his image, in his likeness after his kind. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in our schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater bathrooms. Your sons shall become our minions and do our bidding. They will be recast in our image. They will come to crave and adore us. They attack the seed. They attack the seed giver. And they attack the seed bearer. Ah, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnant of Israel in pouring out your fury on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of bloodshed, and the city full of perversity. They say, The Lord has forsaken the land, and the Lord does not see, but I will recompense their deeds on their own head. Another area of discussion was religion. Uh, this is a, an avowed atheist speaking. Uh, and he said, religion is not necessarily bad. A lot of people seem to need religion with its mysteries and rituals, so they will have religion. But the major re religions of today have to be changed because they are not compatible with the changes to come. The old religions will have to go, especially Christianity then a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept it and feel at home in it. Most people won't be too concerned with religion. They will realize that they don't need it. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with with new words having various shades of meaning. Then the meaning attached to the new word uh, can be close to the old word, and as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized, and then gradually that word replaced with another word. Most people won't know the difference, and this is another one of the times where he said, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter.
teaching the Bible from a historic perspective. That's the reasoning to approve a bill that would make the Bible an elective class in public schools. They are op openly admitting this, how the quantum eraser rewrites the past. Teaching the Bible from a historic perspective. And it says history of the world, and of course it's in a trash can, and again with the history books in the garbage can. Teaching the Bible from a historic perspective. The old religions will have to go, especially Christianity. Then a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. Thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Shall any teach God knowledge, seeing he judges those that are high? One dieth in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet, his breasts are full of milk. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. If there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. God came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Salah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. When the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink. Ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine, nor strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. 
Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. When the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. number of states, including Florida, North Dakota, and West Virginia, have introduced legislation this year pushing for public schools to offer classes on the Bible. And now that idea has the backing of President Trump. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she doted upon their paramours, whose flesh is as the flesh of asses and whose issue is like the issue of horses. The bill would allow for Bible classes to be an elective course geared towards public schools across the state. Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? From the church to the classroom. The bill would mandate every school district to offer a course on the Bible, including Hebrew scriptures and Old Testament, as an elective to grades 9 through 12. Teaching the Bible from a historic perspective. The old religions will have to go, especially Christianity. Then a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Homosexual Manifesto, 1972, Gay Rights Platform, 1993, Gay Rights Platform, the overhauling of straight America. List of sexual orientations. You better watch out for your kids. We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity. 
of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in our school, in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater bathrooms. Wait, bathrooms? That's kind of interesting because there's another DOJ memo going around that's st stating that we have to change how the bathrooms work at schools. In your army bunkhouses, in your truck stops, in your mail clubs, in your houses of Congress, wherever men are with men together, your sons shall become our minions and do our bidding. They will be recast in our image. They will come to crave and adore us. They attack the seed giver and they attack the seed bearer. In other words, the woman and the man. Shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people? And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book even to the time of the end, even to the time of the end, even to the time of the end. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last.
Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. In the Bible itself it says, let the word be written in your heart. That's right, and that's why it says that. To change it from the lion into the wolf, the wolf has always been a representation of evil, of chaos, of the chaos. Yeah, the devil.